Live streaming with guests is a great way to add some variety to your live stream. Let's face it, live streaming is hard. You have to hold an audience's attention and entertain them throughout your entire stream. This can be a challenge for sure. I use all kinds of different guest elements in my live stream to help put on the most entertaining show possible. And you can do it too. Hello my YouTube friends, today I'm going to show you how I add guests to my live stream. It's pretty easy and there are a few different apps that you can use. Now I use Melon in this app, but StreamYards or Restream will work the exact same way so it's just a matter of your personal preference. There are links in the description so you can check out each one for yourself and see what you like best. So you know what? Let's get to it! Alright, so. Here I have a live stream set up. You can see I have a nested scene with just me in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create another nested scene. And this is where we're gonna have our guests. So let's just call this NS Monica for now, cause we're gonna have multiple guests in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna go to uh, window capture. And we're gonna call this window capture Monica. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and select Monica. Now I'm using Melon um, as my broadcast thing. You can use Melon, you could use Restream, you could use StreamYard. It really doesn't matter. There are links in the description so you could check out whichever one you want and choose it. I have her highlighted. We don't want her highlighted, so we're going to unhighlight her. And I have to actually do it on the proper screen. We're going to unhighlight her so we can add multiple people to the stream. And for this particular case, we're going to add Monica. And I'm going to go ahead and just expand this again. Like I said, though, you can on any of these turn on or off the names. I'm going to embiggen that as much as I can. Then I'm going to use the Alt key and we're gonna crop her so she's the only one on screen. So that's why we called this one Monica. And we're gonna crop the bottoms. And then I'm gonna right click and go to filters because Monica has a green screen. So we're gonna go ahead and chroma key her background out and there we go. So now we have a Monica scene and we could place her anywhere we want. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and create another scene. We're gonna call this NS-Michael and this will be for our friend Tech Examined. I'm gonna click the plus. We're gonna add a window capture. I'll call this one Michael. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and select the same scene. I'm gonna embiggen it just like I did before. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and crop everything so that we just have Michael in the scene. And Michael's uh, apparently suffering a little bit of a hair loss thing going on today, you know, but it is, it is what it is. So now we've got Michael, we'll put him in the center of the screen. All right, so if we go back to our scene one, right? What we can do is we have, uh, I have multiple scenes that I've created, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use scene two I'm gonna go ahead and crop my sequence up. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and change my nested scene. We'll just delete the color source. We'll embiggen this. So we're gonna go and transform and we're going to reset the transform. And obviously there's some kind of weird filter on this. I don't know where that weird filter is coming from, but we're gonna go ahead and make that bigger. And there we go. And then I'm just gonna crop myself the same way that we cropped the other ones so it doesn't look unusual, even though as you can see, I have my audio in here. But if we go down and we look at Monica's scene, there is no audio. So we're gonna wanna capture that audio. I'm gonna go to audio output capture, and I'm just gonna go ahead and capture the uh, desktop audio. So in this case, that's the wireless headphones. That's where I'm listening to the audio. And now if you talk, honey, we should be able to hear you. Actually, we, we won't be able to hear you, but they'll be able to see that you're actually chatting. And I'm gonna do the same thing with Michael and it's already gonna be there so I just have to add the existing one. He's got his Invigan bag of virtual popcorn as well. So then I'm gonna go back up to our main scene here and what I'm gonna do, actually this is our nested scene. So we'll just go right here to a main scene and all I have to do now is go into our scene and I can go ahead and add Michael and I can go, go ahead and add Monica just by adding those scenes. And there we go. And since Monica's using a green screen, what I might want to do is go ahead and just add a background. So we'll go to media source and 
We'll just select one since I already have a couple loaded in. There we go. That's a good media source. So now we have three people loaded on here and uh, it, it works pretty well. Okay, so I have to pause here for a second to give you a little bit of information on how all of this works. So you're gonna notice on this scene right here in Melon that there are three of us. There's my camera, there's Monica's camera, and there's Michael's camera. But then when I go back into OBS, I have my camera in there natively. I'm not using the Melon screen capture. So how am I doing this? How am I using my exact same camera on two different applications? Well, the answer to that is relatively simple. It's a free tool I use with my live streaming anyways. It is called Snap Camera. It is the exact same tool that Michael's using to make all those faces while I'm doing this tutorial. So I load on Snap Camera and I load my camera into it, then I can use that snap camera camera in multiple applications. So in this case, I'm using it in Melon with the exact same audio from my original camera. And I'm also using it in OBS with the exact same audio from the original camera. So in case you're wondering, that's how the guests are able to hear me because I have my camera in there with the exact same audio. And in OBS, I have my main camera with the exact same audio. It's that easy to load guests on. And you can see that uh, the audio output capture is coming through for all of our guests. And of course, also our background video. So I would definitely want to mute that. But you can see that the audio output capture comes through for our guests. That's how I add guests to our live stream. Likes and comments are super easy things that you can do to help push this video to a wider audience. So take a second down below and let me know how I'm doing. And while you're there, if you're not subscribed, please do. It really does help me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. Now, if you want to see more content on browser-based live streaming, let me know in the comments. And if you want to learn more about Melon, StreamYard, or Restream, you can check out this playlist, which has a walkthrough for each one of these programs. Big thanks to the sponsors that support this channel. You can find their links in the description down below under the heading sponsors. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you, so thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.